Hello and welcome back to part three of my own personal training diary. Over the past six weeks I've been training away using a training program built for me by Wahoo and Sufferfest and it's all on their Wahoo Suff app. It's called Power Builder if you want to check it out yourself. I'll link to it in the description below. It's six weeks long and it's designed to increase your anaerobic capacity. Now this whole video project has been about seeing how much power I can build, but a very specific type of power. It's about seeing how much I can improve my anaerobic capacity. This is because I found in the summer when I was cycling with my friends, when there was an effort and then a subsequent effort very soon after, I kept getting dropped no matter what I tried to do. So I contacted Wahoo Suff and asked them, can you help me out? And they kindly agreed to build me a training program, which is what I've been doing for the past six weeks. Now that training diary comes to an end. I've completed the program and the final thing for me to do is to do the full frontal test again. So I'm in the garage. I'm in the place where it's all gonna go down. What improvements can I expect to see? So I spoke to Mac recently ahead of doing this and I asked him what he would like to see from me. Um, and he listed them out by the four dimensions of power, which is obviously how the Wahoo Suff app breaks down these things. Um, and we spoke a bit about it. So he said, yeah, anaerobic capacity, which is what we've been trying to train, uh, he would like to see an improvement of eight to 12%. That's a lot. That's a big improvement. It's 343 after the last test. Um, so we'd be looking to hit a figure of around 380 would be a 10%-ish improvement. So I'm looking for anywhere between 370 to 390. Uh, I would be happy if it just increased. I don't know if I could hit an 8% improvement. You know, that's really big. And I have my doubts. I've done the training, but I'm nervous about hitting that figure. Maximal aerobic capacity was a smaller piece of growth. Now I was very strong on this in the first time we did it. This was my area of uh, expertise, shall we say. So we're only looking for a 5% growth here. Really, I'd be happy if that stayed the same. It was borderline very good the first time we did full frontal. So that's not really the, the aim of the game here. Similar story was my FTP. Mac has said, you know, a 3% growth in that would would be okay. Again, I would rather sacrifice that just to increase the anaerobic capacity. I've poured so much into this. Really just want to see that figure go up. Finally, the neuromuscular uh, was not really being tested here. So Max said it could fluctuate between like a plus or minus 5%. But really we're looking at anaerobic capacity. That's the key metric. Now, it's hard to do one of these sessions all the way through. Max said he would expect to see growth off a 67% completion rate um, of the training plan, which I've easily done. So I've just got to believe, get stuck in and get it done. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'll catch up with you after this session. Wish me luck. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, okay, that was good, I think that was good. Go for a walk, it says go for a walk on it. Don't give up. Um, oh boy, I'm a bit, I'm a bit all over the place after that. Oh snap. Well, that is not what I thought would happen. Okay, so I'm joined again by Mac Cassin, my coach for the past three episodes of this Power Builder Challenge. And 
I'm delighted to share my results and I've increased my neuromuscular power by 29. I've increased my anaerobic capacity by a massive 78, which is a huge success. And this was exactly what we were hoping to see doing this specific training plan. However, it has seemingly come up the cost of my five minute maximal aerobic power, which has dropped by 14. Now, Mac, can you explain these numbers a little bit more for me and maybe shed some insight on, on why that's happened? Yeah, uh, for sure. So like you said, our, the goal of the, the past several weeks for you has been to increase that anaerobic capacity. And so, you know, in that sense, not just your ability to go super hard for one minute, but to do repeated hard efforts. Um, those are, that's the two factors that we are looking for. And as you said, a almost 80 watt increase in anaerobic capacity, which is pretty massive and awesome to see for the map, um, portion of it, you know, that reduced, uh, output you had there, you know, there's, there's a few things that could be going on there. Um, one is, you know, the, the lead up for this full frontal, right. Didn't quite follow the exact ideal prep we'd, we'd lined out. And then there's also, you know, a mental component here of, you know, if you were really able to fully commit to that five minute, um, because it is, you know, a, a mentally daunting thing, especially when the component of the test you're looking to do well in comes, comes later down the road. What we can see though, is when we compare your heart rate response in the, in the two tests that you have, the peak heart rate you hit during the five minute in both was, was very similar. Um, and for a more extended effort like that, we know the main driver for heart rate there is going to be um, demand for oxygen. And what we'll actually see with people who have a better anaerobic capacity or can improve their anaerobic ability is you can actually see a higher heart rate after the completion of the one minute effort because you have all those extra metabolites forcing your heart rate to, to increase. And that's exactly what we saw uh, with your second full frontal. It's, it's the highest recorded heart rate you've hit using the app. Um, it was several beats higher than, you know, during your five minute. And, you know, to me, that's really indicative that there were physiological changes that we were able to, to have your body adapt to over this, this training period. So even if the five minute test didn't go perfectly, or, you know, if there's maybe some pacing things going on, it is pretty easy to say that regardless of that, we know that your anaerobic capacity did improve. And that's something that, you know, again, that was the focus of, of your training here. So I think in that regard, it's, it's been quite a success. What I think would be really helpful for this is for you to try out um, our other test that we have, Half Monty, which is a ramp test. Um, that one will only give us insight into your FTP and MAP. But just to double check if it was sort of a warm up or, you know, not being opened up sort of issue with the five minute test and full frontal, you know, if you're willing to get back to the uh, to the hurt box on the trainer and, and do one more test. I think we can, you know, get some full full insights on how the last six weeks went for you. Sounds um, lovely. I can't wait to get back on. Just when I thought all the testing was over, I've got one more to do. Okay, I'm all set up for the second test of this episode, the surprise second test. Wasn't anticipating doing this, but if Mac wants it doing, to corroborate the numbers from my full frontal test, then I will do the half Monty. So ramp tests, in principle, get harder after, over a certain period of time, the wattage increases, goes up like a stair, and you basically just do it until you fail. Fun, fun, fun on a Sunday afternoon, but let's get it done. The results are good. The half Monty ramp test showed that I had improved my MAP by 34 watts and my FTP by 15 watts, which is no mean feat. Um, what does that tell you, though, Mac, about my training? I think it's pretty safe to say that you were fairly fatigued going into that. Um, there's some reasons for that that we can get into later, but I think really what um, half Monty has shown us is that you know these the gains in fitness, the improvements in fitness you've made 
um, you know, we were really focused in on AC, but with most training, the, the gains you made were spread across all the different metrics we have. And so to me, it's really reassuring to see that, you know, the, the work, the specificity kind of going out of the norm for you, that's not, you know, following a really specific intervals, especially indoors is not always the easiest thing to do. But I think it, it does show that having that real specificity can in a very short time, six weeks is not a long time, you know, you can still see pretty significant improvements in fitness. Well, that's great news because it shows that all the hard work was a success. So what does it tell us about why those specific areas, my MAP and my FTP, were um, lower on full frontal? What does that tell us about my approach to testing? As you mentioned, pacing is, can be a real, real issue, especially with the five minute effort. Um, it's not an effort that people do very often. And so knowing how to pace that where you're gonna hit you know, the failure point, that's, that's difficult to do. And just being a little bit off, if your legs are a little tired or you're a little extra fatigued, it's really easy to just undercook the start and just, you know, be able to ramp up at the end, but you really want an evenly paced effort for that. And that's what we see when we look at your first full frontal versus your second, we see that, you know, it's really just the first two minutes you were under your previous numbers and then ramped up in the second half. And so with half money, you know, it is a ramp test, um, but there's a secondary component to it, which is a heart rate constrained effort, a 20 minute effort. And that makes half money a bit more unique because it does do a better job of, you know, looking at your aerobic fitness. One thing with ramp tests in general is if you have more anaerobic capacity, um, you know, you have the ability to sort of fake a ramp test in that you can go longer and, and deeper than someone with less anaerobic capacity. So someone with a lower FTP can potentially go longer in a ramp test. And if you just look at that ramp test number to establish an FTP, you know, that number might be artificially high. How we mitigate that with half money is, you know, we look at both your heart rate and power during the ramp. And then based off of that, we give you a specific heart rate target that you have to ride at for 20 minutes. And when we look at the power to heart rate relationship for that effort, the relationship during the ramp, and the relationship during the warm-up, we can take a much better, we get a much better idea of that aerobic component of your fitness, so where your FTP is, is gonna land. So even though we did a bunch of work for you focused on AC, you know, we've improved your AC, you, you did better in this ramp test than you would have at the start of this, in part because of that extra anaerobic capacity ability, but we're, we're really confident in the map and um, FTP numbers coming off of it because we have those extra components and those extra checks. As I understand it, and this was a learning for me in this process because I've never really done that much testing before, and testing is quite a specific skill, kind of above and beyond just riding a bike normally. Um, and you guys have quite a lot of advice around uh, the week before testing and your preparation for taking part in a full frontal test that people should follow and there's quite a few tips for that so what's your what tends to be your key takeaways ahead of testing yeah so you know you can almost view like ahead of testing is the same as you would getting ready for like a your target event or a, a race like along that it's the keys are you want to be you want to be fresh coming into it you don't want to have a lot of fatigue but you still want to be sharp you want to be snappy we like to say and you know the way you you do that is you know pretty standard taper is you really you drop volume, but you maintain or even slightly bump up the intensity on a, on a few sessions leading into the test. Um, and at the same time, you wanna make sure the day before is very important because there's a number of things going on in, inside your body that if you don't ride for a couple of days and then go into a all out effort, you know, you're not really primed to do your best, which is why our standard day before uh, testing workout is called primers. We want to make sure that your body's ready to really put everything out the day afterwards. Sure. And because life does often get in the way of training and many other things, my week ahead of me completing my full frontal test was less than ideal. And you suggested that I was potentially quite fatigued. Um, is that right? Yeah. So when we look at like we were saying that that last lead in week, that last eight days, nine days leading into a test, you know, you really want to drop, drop the volume back down. And for, for you, part of this is we're doing this because we want to get you better at, 
you know, better able to handle group rides, but we're doing this because you like riding your bikes. And so the weekend before test, when things were supposed to be a bit dialed back, you know, you went out and had a really enjoyable ride that was, was pretty big. It was one of the biggest ones of the six weeks. And then the same thing when, you know, when we had that full funnel planned, um, you know, other things came up, life got in the way and you had an opportunity that, you know, to ride outside and enjoy riding your bike. And so, you know, you had three really awesome days out on the bike during a time when, you know, either you were supposed to be testing or resting. And then, so, you know, having that big extra volume and then no riding the day before and then going into full frontal, you know, it's just a lot of factors going into leaving you to like, you know, not perform your best on, on that test day. And I think that's really an uh, important takeaway that if you don't have to test on a given day to make sure that you're rested. And so that was definitely a, a driving component here. And that is what essentially what we did for you going into half Monty, we dialed things back, got you rested and you were better able to, you know, be at your full capacity on that day. This was my first ever training plan. So it was always going to be a steep learning curve. And that is one of the key things that I've learned is um, preparation really is key. So looking at the results in general, they were a really big success. Um, and that was, was me balancing doing a training plan with, you know, a busy life and I have a full time job. Just the same story as, you know, so many of our viewers have. But if I'd been able to complete more of this training plan or even complete the whole thing, so I managed to hit every session on the head without dropping any, what type of results could you actually see? I mean, our general rule of thumb, if, if you've been training consistently, is that, you know, 1% improvement per week is, you know, the norm, the expected. Um, for someone who's brand new to structured training, you know, you're, you're much more likely to see these really big gains in the first six weeks of a training plan. And so that's why in, in most of our um, more entry level training plans for people with less experience riding, we have half Monty at the halfway point because we're expecting some pretty significant improvements by that point. And then, cause you wanna make sure that that second six weeks, you know, your numbers are where they were supposed to be. You know, neuromuscular is tricky because that's such a short effort. And, you know, depending on your trainer, depending on the gear you have selected into it, um, you know, a fluctuation of that plus or minus 5% is really, um, it's not good or bad. It's just, you know, people generally get to around a number that they can hit on the trainer. They're comfortable hitting on the trainer. Um, and that, that'll stay there. And then, then yeah, AC can be one of the, with that specific focus, yeah, like a 15, 20% improvement, but you know, you had almost, almost a 50% improvement, which is, which is pretty spectacular. You know, I'm really pleased with that because um, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a complete novice when it comes to cycling. I do, I'm an, am I'm an amateur, but I ride a lot and I'm very fortunate to do it for my, for my living. So actually to see that type of gains in somebody who is already quite a committed cyclist is, um, is really, really impressive but also goes to show that you can ride your bike a lot, like I did, but still not be anywhere near your actual potential because specific training is what can really help unlock what is potential from you on a bike. You know, the big question I have is, you know, since completing this plan, you've been on some more group rides, how would you, how do you feel on the, on the road? Because test, test numbers are one thing, but really the, the goal of this was, you know, get you better in those group rides. So how have those, how have those been going since we finished here? Good, actually. Um, in terms of how I'm riding, I am that bit more aggressive. You know, I know I can actually really make myself hurt. And I think that's the biggest takeaway I've taken from this is that I explained in episode one that I'm terrible at pushing into pain. Uh, and now through these training plans that were on uh, Sufferfest, they're, um, I am able to do that. I have learned that it is possible to dig deep and that's showing through on my rides in when we go climbing up hills and, you know, things start to get a little sporty. I'm confident in myself now, which is what I wasn't before. And that's what this training plan has really unlocked for me is that knowledge that I can go harder and go harder again. Um, and that you always have a little something in reserve, even if you don't think you do. 
so comes to an end six weeks of my training plan and you know that's been a really big success i'm really chuffed with the numbers from my first ever training plan and thank you very much mac for all of your incredibly helpful insights along the way that have kept me on track and ultimately allowed me to hit some new pbs in my numbers so it comes to an end my six week training plan in association with Wahoo Suf training app. Um, and what a result, you know? I would not have thought that I would have been able to build such an increase in my anaerobic capacity. Genuinely shocked by that. That is a 78 watt increase uh, just through this training plan and the mental changes that have come with it. Now, if you have enjoyed this video and this video series, then please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out and we want to keep bringing you this type of content. Now, if you have any questions about my plan, how I found it, what I want to do next, leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, I'll be back soon with some more great content and I'll see you then.